Hello and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to discuss one of the simplest uh, methods for optimizing functions, and it is called particle swarm optimization. So it's, uh, as you can probably guess, it's based on the natural behavior of swarms of uh, bees or ants and then uh, or for example if you look at physics the brownian motion of particles like gas particles in a room or any sort of particle that has a uh, sort of random behavior can be observed to uh, uh, to understand the concept of uh, pso particle storm optimization so to start with, uh, let's assume we have a problem of optimizing an n-dimensional function. So we have a function and uh, for now we're going to assume that it returns a real value. So it's a real valued function and it has n real uh, variables or parameters. So the function is n-dimensional and there are typically in general two classes of optimizations one is obviously we're talking about numerical optimization which means there is this uh, there is uh, some sort of iteration factor iteration behavior into the algorithms so one of the uh, generally known uh, methods is gradient based which we need to it so it requires for us to calculate the derivatives of the function df dxi these are partial derivatives but there are another class there is another class of uh, optimization methods that actually don't require uh, finding the derivative of the function and that's in general a good thing i mean obviously if you know the gra gradient of the function it can uh, push you towards the optimal solution very quickly so gradient based uh, uh, gradient based family of optimization are generally faster but uh, uh, we need to calculate the derivatives of the function so particle swarm optimization belongs to the group of uh, optimization methods that don't require the derivative so it's a derivative less approach and uh, it's based on the obse observing the general behavior of a swarm in nature like the swarm of bees or ants and the key here is that this swarm appears to have a random behavior random motion but the main key point here is that generally a swarm follows a general objective let's say you look at a group of bees that are trying to get from one point to their hive okay to their home their hive and uh, in this swarm of bees uh, every bee on its path to the hive might uh, take a random path which is very different from the others but eventually the swarm reaches uh, the hive okay or if you look at just ants a group of ants each one has a in our eyes each one of the ants has a random behavior rand takes a random path but eventually all the ants get to the home okay so that's the general objective of a swarm and this could be an interesting idea for optimizing a function we create a group of particles a particle could represent anything an ant a bee or anything and then uh, we can give each particle a random behavior but within that random behavior we want the whole swarm of particles follow a general objective and the general objective here is to reach the minimum or maximum of a function okay and we can program it to uh, find uh, global or local minima or maxima actually this should be extrema okay and uh, if you want to learn more about this you can look at these two references that i put here reference one is a paper so you go to sciencedirect.com slash topics slash engineering and look at the particles from optimization obviously the second reference is wikipedia you just search for particles from optimization on wikipedia all right now here i have a example i took this photo from uh, 
Wikipedia, which is a very nice example of a 2D function, f of x and y. So this horizontal axis is x, this horizontal axis, this vertical axis is y, and x and y, we're looking for the minima or maxima. We're looking for the extremum of the function in this interval, minus 3 to 3 for x, minus 3 to 3 for y. And these Colorful lines are basically the contours of this 2D function in this uh, area, in this region, okay? Now, as you can see, we have some particles. Every one of these red crosses is uh, representing a particle. And by particle, I mean it could be a bee, it could be an ant or anything. And these uh, orange arrows are basically the velocity of this particle, which shows so we, by just looking at this diagram or this plot, we get two informations from the particle. One is where it is right now, and the velocity shows where it is going in the next step, okay? And uh, the idea here is that uh, uh, basically we start with a random distribution of this particle. So each particle is placed randomly somewhere in this region. And then we update the velocity of the uh, particles and then update their uh, position at each step of the iteration. So this is an iteration-based approach. And uh, it, also in the contours, based on this color bar, you see that we have a global minimum. Global minimum, this one is a minimum, which is uh, here. And this uh, plot shows an example of particles reaching or approaching the minimum. But we have also some local max and some local mean. All right. Now, this is an animated plot. So I'm going to go full screen to show you the animation here. So as you can see, uh, what happens here, mo the particles start from a random position. But their velocity is somehow programmed. And we will see how to program that. So most of the swarm eventually reaches this global minimum, right? Now, obviously, you can see some of the particles get trapped at some other positions. This is a local uh, max, for example. And some particles are trapped here, here, in other local uh, or in other contours here, for example. But the, most of the swarm actually reaches the destination, which is the global mean, all right? So this is how the particle storm optimization works. It's a linear programming, very simple to program, and we will see how to do that. All right, so I guess uh, this was very interesting uh, description of the PSO I took from uh, Wikipedia. You can just go to Wikipedia and search for it. And it says, in computational science, particle storm optimization, or PSO, is a computational method that optimizes a problem by iteratively trying to improve a candidate solution with regard to a given measure of quality, all right? So it's an iteration-based method, and it solves a problem by having a population of candidate solutions. These are our particles, here dubbed particles, okay? So we have particles and moving these particles around in the search space. So we have a search space according to a simple mathematical formula. So it's a very simple uh, formula over the particles position and velocity. So we look at where it is right now and then we update the velocity based on some criteria and then uh, use that velocity to update the position to see where it is going to be in the next iteration step. Each particle's movement is influenced by its local best known position, which uh, depends on the objective of the swarm, if we want to maximize a function or minimize a function. But it is, uh, but is also guided toward the best known position in the search space, which are updated as better positions are found by other particles. This is expected to move the swarm toward the best solution. So the best solution is our objective, right? PSO is originally attributed to Kennedy, Eberhardt, and Xi, and was first intended for simulating social behavior as a stylized representation of the movement of organisms in a bird flock or fish school. The algorithm was simplified and it was observed 
to be performing optimization. So it's more like a heuristic approach. I guess there is no concrete mathematical proof that this uh, algorithm should maximize or minimize a function, but it has been observed and confirmed that yes, this algorithm can in fact perform optimization. The book by Kennedy and Eberhardt describes many philosophical aspects of PSO and swarm intelligence. An extensive survey of PSO applications is made by Poly. And uh, you can look all these references on Wikipedia. I just removed them. I didn't put the references here. Recently, a comprehensive review on theoretical and experimental works on PSO has been published by Boniadi and uh, Michalowicz. PSO is a uh, meta heuristic as it makes few or no assumptions about the problem being optimized. We don't care if the function is smooth, we don't care if the derivatives exist, if the function is continuous, there is pro basically no assumption. And can search very large spaces of candidate solutions. So my function could have 100 variables, 200 variables, doesn't matter, the PSO doesn't add much overhead in terms of increasing the dimensionality of the search space. However, meta heuristic, uh, meta heuristics such as PSO do not guarantee an optimal solution. So this is a general fact because it just iterates and iterates and updates the position and velocity of the particles, but there is no guarantee. So you can put a convergence criteria, right? to see uh, when most of the uh, particles get to the optimal solution but in general there is no guarantee there is no guarantee that an optimal solution is ever found also PSO does not use the gradient of the problem being optimized okay this is what we talked about PSO belongs to the family of the optimization methods that do not use gradient or any derivative of the function which means PSO does not require that the optimization problem be differentiable. So no, no smoothness of the function is the prerequisite. We don't care if the function is continuous or discontinuous or whatever behavior it has, it doesn't matter. As is required by classic optimization methods such as gradient descent and quasi-Newton methods. Okay? So PSO in general seems to be very simple and uh, very useful. Obviously, because it doesn't use gradient, as I mentioned, it could be uh, slower than gradient-based methods, but its simplicity really uh, makes it very useful. Especially, especially that uh, we can uh, have uh, a function with a large number of variables, and PSO still works. So if you have more than 10, 20, or maybe 100 variables, it's better to try PSO first. All right, so let's uh, uh, dig deeper. So we have a function that we want to optimize. It has n variables, okay, x1, x2, xn. And in the optimization terminology, we call this a fitness function, okay? It's an n-dimensional function, n variables. Each variable is initialized in a given interval. So our search space is basically uh, first, we tell the algorithm, okay, I want my x1 to be in this interval. So search for the optimal points in this interval for x1, in this interval for x2, etc. And uh, basically, a particle, uh, the dimensionality of the particle is basically n, because each particle is representing uh, this n-dimensional uh, vector. Search space. How many particles are used? So we have n variables, so the dimensionality of each particle is n, but then uh, we need to decide how many particles to use, and that determines the dimensionality of the swarm, okay? So these are two separate things. So the dimension of PSO space is the number of particles, the dimension of each particle is the number of variables, okay? And then uh, the optimization objective, the optimization objective is to either minimize or maximize uh, the fitness function, the function that we want to optimize. And it's called swarm's objective. That's the objective of the swarm. Out of all those random behavior, we try to get the 
something that conforms to all particles and that's basically the swarm's objective again an example is uh, you see a group of bees that have a random they're flying randomly but then their objective is to get to the hive right so each one each bee may take a random behavior which in the again in the optimization terminology we call it random walk but then eventually all the bees get to the hive so they follow a general uh, uh, purpose but in a individually they have a random behavior and that's very intriguing and interesting right so the swarm's objective is best known position for each particle so as the particle takes a random walk random uh, motion it uh, it uh, we can evaluate the value of the fitness function at each position of the particle for each particle and then we can update its best we can keep track of its best position best position means where the fun so if we want to find the, the minimum of the function from a step zero that the particle starts to move we keep track of the value of the function at each position and try to compare it with the previous values of the function at the previous positions and try to keep the minimum value and the best position is where the function is at its best minimum okay best known position for each particle best known value of the fitness function for each particle all right and these are basically connected to each other if we want to minimize the function or minimization is the swarm ob swarms objective at each step we look at the best value so far which is based on the previous positions of the particle and the fitness function at the current position all right if the best value is greater than the fitness the value of the function at the current position we take the current position as the best value as the best position okay so we have the best position for the particle and obviously uh, if we if we update the best position we also update the best value so this is kind of like a gradient based approach right but the good thing about gradient is that we know that the gradient vector always points towards uh, contours that are either decreasing or increasing so we don't need to guess or do this check because just calculating the gradient guarantees that we will have uh, such behavior anyways right so gradient is basically this behavior but with a hundred percent certainty here in the PSO, because we're doing random uh, motion, we just have to check in each iteration and then update and update. If we, uh, so again, if we want to maximize, we check for the best value, which is based on the previous positions of the particle, and then uh, compare it with the value of the function, the fitness function at the current position. If the value, if the current value of the function at the current position is greater than the best value so far we update the best position and best value again all right it's very simple to understand what we're trying to do and this is uh, completely an iteration okay so again most of this is just calculating multiplying some numbers and then doing comparison so there is no expensive uh, operations such as uh, taking derivatives or whatever all right so this diagram also tries to summarize uh, the idea so far is that we have particles each particle in general has a random motion random walk so for the random walk what we need to keep track of is position and velocity current position current velocity and in the next iteration step we use the current velocity to update the position and then we update the velocity again and then continue so each position each particle has its position and velocity constantly updated throughout the iteration but then there is another thing is that we keep track of the swarm's objective right the best position of each particle and the best uh, value for the function at that uh, best position okay uh, again so these are based on the swarm objective and we talked about minimizing and maximizing all right 
Okay, so how do we update the velocity and position of the particles? That's something that came, comes out of the, those scientific papers and references that you can look at. Well, here's in general how we implement PSO. Step one, create a given number of particles and each particle has a velocity, position, and these are n-dimensional vectors if we have n variables in our function, right? Each particle has an initial random position so initial random position in a given interval. So if our search, for example, x1 is between minus 2 to 2, x2 is between uh, 0 and 5, so we, put, pick a, we pick a random position, a random pair of x1 and x2 in this uh, region. Each particle has a simple move method. So each particle, we implement a move method for a particle to emulate the random walk, all right, of the particle. So let me call this again, random walk. And this is the algorithm. This is the base algorithm for the PSO. We have an n-dimensional vector for the position at the m plus one iteration step, and then uh, it updates based on the uh, current position, uh, xi, at the iteration m plus uh, velocity at the iteration m or m plus one here i put m plus one and the reason is that you can start from so it depends how you initialize the velocity vectors i personally prefer to initialize them with zero right so at the beginning i assume that the particle is at rest and then it starts to uh, move now the other way is you can initialize the velocity with uh, some random velocity, okay? So then uh, at the beginning the particle is actually uh, moving. So you can from the step zero you can uh, update the position based on the velocity. So if you can if you, you can imagine if I put v i m here, so the position at m plus one is updated based on the position at m and the velocity at m. So if m is zero at zero of the step, if the velocity is initialized to zero, then uh, this algorithm doesn't work because, or it works, but we just lose one step of iteration because x, uh, xi one is equal to xi zero. So there's not much happening in the first iteration, but then we update the velocity and everything works. So it's up to you to choose vi m here or vi m plus one. Doesn't really matter. So I prefer to update the velocity first at each step and then update the position. Uh, you can do the opposite, update the position and then update the velocity, okay? And these two are n-dimensional. So how do we update the velocity? That's the heart and the core of PSO. The velocity, the next velocity is uh, based on the current velocity, the current position, xim. And the two other things, one, the best position of particle i so far, and the best guess uh, of the general swarm behavior. So the best guess is uh, basically you look at the best value, best position of all the particles and choose the one that has the best position, best value of the fitness function based on the objective, right? So there is a individual factor here best position of the particle and its current position and also a group behavior or the swarm behavior okay which is uh, best uh, position of all the particles and we look at which one actually uh, causes the best value for the function and uh, here we have w w is called the inertia weight and typically it's, it should be between zero and one and it's actually been found that if it's between 0.5 and 0.9 it works the best so you can pick any value between 0.5 and 0.9 and it's fixed it doesn't change with the iteration steps c1 and c2 are two random numbers these are called social interaction factors c1 is basically interaction of the particle with itself which means uh, the history of the particle C2 is the, the strength of the social behavior of all the swarm, all the particles in the swarm. And then, uh, so as you can see, these are all deterministic uh, 
parameters. So where is the random behavior? The random behavior are these two numbers, R1 and R2. And these are random numbers between 0 and 1. So these two parameters, R1 and R2, are the ones that are actually giving the random walk behavior. Okay? So this is it. And then in this step 2, we create a space of particles. This is our search space in which the particles can move and can move the swarm of particles based on the fitness function. That's the whole goal. And then finally, when we implement the PSO, we want to have a solve method. And this solve method uh, runs the iteration and updates the best solution. Best position of all particles, each best position of each particle, best position of the swarm, best value for the fitness function, for each particle, best value of the fitness function for the swarm in general. All right. And uh, so in the in this video, we just talked about the basics of particle swarm optimization. In the next video, I'm going to uh, actually write the code and implement this and look into more details of particle swarm optimization. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.